Are you ready to discover 50 fun and creative ideas for transforming ordinary household items into unique and stylish home decor? Well, I only have 50 minutes, so let's get started. Here's a fun way to make use of an old cigar box. Knock off the brackets from an old wood shelf. I needed to make mine slightly smaller, so I cut off about a half an inch from the top of each bracket with my miter saw. I adhered the brackets to the old cigar box using construction adhesive, and for extra stability, I added a few small screws through the base of the cigar box and into each bracket. My brackets already had holes in the back for hanging, so I attached a couple screws to the wall and I was able to easily hang up the finished cigar box shelf. You can also attach shelf brackets to an old book and then attach the brackets to the wall to create an unexpected bedside table. And you could top that shelf with an old purse turned planter. Just be sure to use a leak proof pot if you're adding a live plant. Here's an easy project using old glass jars of different sizes. Spray paint the lids, then measure the jars and create simple decals on your Cricut machine. Stickers or rub-on transfers would work too. I like to use numbers. Then the jars can be used to store any number of things. I like to use them as storage in the bathroom because they're the perfect size for Q-tips and cotton balls. Small jars are great for storing matches. Have you seen those boutique match jars that cost $15 to $20? Well, here's a cheap way to duplicate that look. Print out a vintage matchbox label and decoupage it to the side of a jam jar. I cut the striker off the matchbox and glue it to the bottom or the back of the jar. I paint the lid to match the color of the matches. I think these Dollar Tree matches are pretty cute. Here's an idea for making use of a tiny picture frame. Center a small piece of fabric and a bit of pillow stuffing over the back of your frame. Begin pushing the fabric and the stuffing through the opening in the frame until you create a nice size bubble on the front side. Fold the extra fabric over onto the stuffing and hot glue it in place. Trim off any excess fabric. Then return the frame's backing and hot glue it in place. Now you have a pin cushion that is cute enough to leave out all the time. Here's a project for those of us that have a bunch of old storage tins shoved in the back of our kitchen cabinets. Paint the bases and the lids separately with your favorite color of spray paint. You could make traditional decals on your Cricut with words such as sugar, flour, coffee, etc. But here's a different idea. I printed out vintage botanical images of herbs and spices, such as thyme and cinnamon, and decoupaged these to the front of each can. Then I found the center of each lid and drilled a small hole. I could have attached a small knob, but instead... I created a little pull using twine and a bead. I decided I wanted a more rustic look, so once the Mod Podge was dry, I ran sandpaper over the labels to roughen them up a bit. Then I applied a top coat of Mod Podge. Who knew old Christmas tins could look so cute sitting on my kitchen counter in May? Here's another set of storage tins I transformed. I decoupaged napkins to these. For this next project, I found a narrow cardboard box that I wasn't using, and I reinforced the bottom of the box with a couple strips of duct tape. I cut the sides at an angle, like you see on those desk and magazine organizers. Then I applied glue stick to the back of an old book cover. 
I tried to align the spine of the book cover with the end of my cardboard box. Then I wrapped it around either side, smoothing out any wrinkles. I'm disappointed that I didn't get the book cover on as straight as I would have liked. Still, this makes a great hiding spot for those appliance manuals and flimsy paperback cookbooks. Here's another option for hidden storage. Use a utility knife to cut through the pages of a thick, tall book. Since you can only remove a few pages at a time, this will take a little while. Use scissors to cut away at the paper that is still stuck to the binding. You can also use a sanding block to further smooth down the edges of the paper left behind. Then use a cardboard box about the same depth as your book. Cut your box into the shape of a magazine organizer. I cut a strip of paper from one of the book pages and used glue stick to adhere it to the front and bottom of the cardboard box. Then I used hot glue on the sides of the box to adhere it to both the back and front cover of the book. Even though I used a flimsy cracker box on this organizer, the hard cover of the book made it quite sturdy and stable. This makes the perfect little hiding spot for just about anything. And what a cheap way to keep your bookshelves looking neat and organized. Here's an idea for an old stained, torn, or just plain ugly lampshade. Remove all of the fabric from the shade, then begin wrapping it with colorful clothesline from Dollar Tree. Going in circles around the shade, wrap the rope around each metal rod as you approach it. Go to the next metal rod, wrap around it, and continue like this until the body of the shade is completely covered. Then wrap the metal rods around the bottom circumference of the shade. If you want to use this as a lampshade again, wrap the top circumference in the same way. But because I wanted to use this as a basket, I wrapped the top using the same technique as I had on the body of the shade to create a base for my basket. You can use it in multiple ways, but it's great for holding a planter, especially outdoors. Have an old cake pan that's seen better days? Well, if you want, first give it a couple coats of spray paint. My pan was enamel, so I didn't need to paint it first. I found a floral rub-on transfer that fit my pan nicely, and I adhered it to the inside using the plastic tool that comes in the transfer package. Then I cut a scrap of wood to fit inside the pan to create a small shelf. I painted it white to match the pan. Then I applied Gorilla Glue to the back and set it in the pan. I drilled a hole on either side of the pan and inserted screws going through the pan and into the piece of wood. Finally, I attached a small D-ring to the back of the pan using Gorilla Glue so that the pan would hang flat against the wall. If you also have a grungy old bread pan, I have an idea for that too. In addition to the bread pan, I also grabbed two old lamp harps. I removed all the extra pieces from the harps, then using a drill bit about the same diameter as the harp, I drilled holes in the four corners of the baking pan. You want a snug fit, so don't make the holes too large. Insert the legs of your harps through the holes and use a ruler to adjust the height of each leg. Fill in around all four holes with hot glue to make sure that the legs stay put. If you want a modern look, you could spray paint your pan, but I wanted a more rustic look, so I painted mine with green chalk paint, and when the paint was dry, I distressed it with sandpaper. To protect the paint, I applied a coat of clear wax. To fill my planter, I spray painted 
four tin cans with white spray paint and printed out some vintage shaker labels, which I cut out and decoupaged to the side of each can. You could put live plants in your cans, but I filled each can with packing styrofoam and topped it off with coffee. Then I added inexpensive greenery stems to the styrofoam. I also think this pan would look great without the cans. Just fill it with dirt and put your plants directly in it. If you have some old eyeglasses or sunglasses lying around, this next project is for you. I snipped off the nose pads for a cleaner look. Then I printed out a quote on some antique looking paper. I cut it to fit over one of the eyeglass lenses and applied Mod Podge to the front of the paper and to the back of the lens and adhered the paper, smoothing out any wrinkles. I found a very small leftover piece of a floral rub-on transfer, which I applied to the other lens. Then I used a small pair of scissors to trim around both lenses. Then for a final touch, I hot glued some small faux flowers to the nose bridge. For this next project, I used two old woven placemats. I gave them a couple coats of white chalk paint and lightly distressed them with a sanding block. Then I applied large floral rub-on transfers. I went over the placemats with a top coat of Mod Podge to seal and protect the image. To create a hanger, I hot glued faux vines to the back side of the placemats and then I went over the vine with several pieces of white duct tape for good measure. For additional embellishment, I cut a flower shape from an old doily and hot glued it in the corner and then tied a bow from some vintage lace. Do you have any decorative gift boxes left over from Christmas or a birthday? Well, turn it into a cute tissue box. Just cut out a small rectangle in the lid using a utility or X-Acto knife. You can even turn metal cleaning cans into cute home decor. I'm using an old can of Goof Off. I painted the can with primer and then I sized and printed out a vintage label. I brushed Mod Podge to the back of the label and adhered it to the can. Then I repainted the back sides of the can with black latex paint to better coordinate with the label. When the paint was dry, I added some bittersweet stems and a lace bow. If you have an old teapot with a lid, turn it into a sewing kit. Buy a pin cushion from Dollar Tree and hot glue it inside the lid. I added straight pins to the cushion and I bought a manicure set at Dollar Tree so that I could include the small scissors. In fact, I reused the container to hold some sewing needles that I also purchased at Dollar Tree. Then I rated my sewing supplies and added several spools of thread, a seam ripper, and a small container of buttons. Now you have a sewing kit that's cute enough to leave on a shelf or sitting out all the time. Here's a unique idea for repurposing an old glass light globe. Find a candle stand that the globe fits nicely in. Then fill the globe with a small collection of items such as old game pieces or shells. Then sit the globe like a cloche on your candle stand. Easy, unique, and oh so cute. For a different glass globe idea, use the Modern Masters Rust Finish Metal Effects Kit. Apply two coats of the primer to the glass lampshade. Follow the primer with two coats of the iron paint, 
and when the iron paint is dry, spritz the shade with a light coat of the rust activator. Wait five minutes and spritz it a second time. The shade will continue to rust over the next couple hours. Next, I glued a small piece of styrofoam into the opening of the lampshade and added a large stick to emulate a pumpkin stem. Then I filled in around the stick with a variety of faux flowers and filled in any empty spots with Spanish moss. You can display it as is or sit it on an old wooden spool or candlestick to make it look like a mushroom. Are you still hanging on to one of those 1990s brass and glass light fixtures? Well, why not remove all of the electrical parts and use the glass shade for a terrarium? I filled mine with driftwood and some very realistic looking faux succulents. Do you have an old vent cover that needs to be replaced? Well, save the old one and turn it into one of a kind decor. Use it as is or freshen it up with a coat of paint. Vent covers usually come in common sizes, so you can easily find a frame to fit around it. I folded down the metal tabs on the frame to hold the vent in place, but I wanted it to be even sturdier, so I cut some small dowel rods to fit on the back side of the frame. I put them along each edge of the vent cover and stapled them to the frame. And for extra stability, I added super glue in the crack between the dowel rod and the frame. Originally, I had planned on hanging a small wreath in the center of the vent cover, but I just loved the texture of this crusty vent cover, so I just wired a very small bouquet in the corner instead. Don't have an old vent cover? Well, how about an old mailbox? Don't ever throw away an old mailbox because they can be used for so many different things. I gave mine a coat of white spray paint and then distressed it just a bit with some sandpaper. I wanted to use the mailbox on my front door in place of a wreath, so I added some styrofoam inside. Then I used a couple of floral pins to hold a bird nest in place on one side of the mailbox, and then I added some faux greenery next to the nest. To add a floral element, I cut down some cherry blossom stems to add to the right-hand side of the mailbox. Then I filled in around the plants and flowers with Spanish moss. I also wanted to add this cute fuzzy green rabbit. He had a small hole on the bottom, so I cut a dowel rod down and shoved that into the hole and stuck it into the styrofoam to hold him in place. I can easily change out the contents of this mailbox for different seasons and holidays. Have an old post-mount mailbox? Well, it makes the perfect container for an adorable Christmas village. This next idea would work with a bump pan, angel food cake pan, or in my case, a jello mold. You'll also need an old clock face, and you know I have plenty of those. I painted the inside of my jello mold with a couple coats of white chalk paint, and when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with sandpaper. Then I attached the clock to the center of the jello mold with super glue. I found a few small kitchen themed items in my stash that I glued into the bottom of the jello mold. I also added in a bundle of faux rosemary and a small image of a vintage recipe card. And finally, I used some E6000 to adhere a small D ring to the back of the jello mold so I could hang it on the wall. If you like clocks as much as I do, here's another idea. You'll need a battery clock box, which you can buy or just remove one from another old clock. You'll also need an old pot lid. 
Mine happens to be missing its handle. I hot glued the clock box to the back of the lid and a large washer to the front of the lid to conceal the large hole, and then I attached the clock hands. I decided to add an old wood handle off of a steak knife, so I broke off the blade and then drilled a hole in one end of the wood handle to run some twine through. I filled the hole at the opposite end of the handle with some hot glue and E6000 and then pushed it on a small piece of metal that was sticking out from the side of the lid. You can also add lettering to old lids to create unique wall decor. Have a piece of sheetrock left over from a remodeling project? Well, here's an idea for you. To cut sheetrock, score it with a utility knife, and then you can just snap off your piece. I covered the sides and the top of two pieces of 11 by 14 sheetrock using pre-mixed joint compound. I would say that I put it on about a fourth of an inch thick. It's pretty runny, so let it set up for a couple hours. Then carefully press fake plants into the joint compound. I just use my fingers to press on the plants to create the impression. And I could tell that this was not going to be a strong impression. So using a putty knife, I applied a very thin coat of joint compound over the entire plant. I let this dry overnight and then I came back the next day and removed the plastic plants. Because of the extra joint compound I added over the top, they were looking pretty messy. So I took them outside and began carefully sanding around the impressions, removing loose bits of joint compound. I also dug out the stem impressions a bit with a Cricut tool. Then I sealed it by painting on a coat of white latex wall paint. If you want the plant design to be more prominent, you could brush some watered down paint into the impressions or apply antiquing wax to the entire plaque. However, I liked how subtle these looked in all white with a slight sheen. If you've been having the windy weather I have lately, then you might just have some branches in your yard. So let's grab a big one and turn it into a candle stand. I found the center of my branch and then marked out five evenly spaced spots where I drilled holes using a one inch spade drill bit. If you don't have a branch, you really could drill holes in just any old piece of wood. Now let's update some old candles to use in our branch. I melted down a thrift store pillar candle, adding one orange and one brown crayon to the wax to give it a caramel color. Then I dipped each of my old taper candles into the colored wax, lifting them out and letting the wax dry for a second or two, and then re-dipping them two or three times. I also dipped the base of each candle in the wax to help it stand up straight in the drilled holes. And if you like, you can dress up your branch with some fake flowers or greenery. You can also use this technique to create ombre candles. The darker areas are created by repeated dippings. I have lots of ideas for upcycling clocks on my channel. Here's an idea for repurposing an old alarm clock. Disassemble your clock and set the parts aside. Print out a vintage scale face in a size that will fit your clock face and then attach it using glue stick. Spray paint the body of your clock in whatever color you like. I used black spray paint. Reassemble your clock. You may need to use super glue to reattach the back to the body of the clock. Drill a small hole in the top and bottom of your clock and then add hooks. I used one eye hook and one cup hook because that's what I had on hand. I used a couple drops of super glue just to make sure that the hooks stayed put. Paint your hooks to match the clock. 
Next, spray paint a stove burner cover, a metal lid, or a cake pan to match your clock. Drill three holes along the edge, equidistance apart. Attach a plant hanging chain from Dollar Tree to the holes and to the bottom hook of your clock. You can easily remove links from your chain if you think it's too long. Now you have an adorable vintage looking scale that you can put a plant on or use to display any number of items. Magazine racks can be used in a variety of ways. After I took this one apart, I decided to repurpose the top frame. I cut the spindles down and laid them out in a pleasing arrangement using both ends for variety. Then I used wood fill to fill in all of the holes where I didn't put a spindle. Once the wood filler was dry, I sanded the surface smooth using an orbital sander, and then I used wood glue to permanently attach the spindles. I lightly hammered the spindles to make sure they were firmly in place. I applied a primer and followed that with two coats of a matte white spray paint. Then I attached two D-rings to the back. This rack could be hung horizontally or vertically. Now to upcycle the base of the magazine rack. It looked like a breakfast tray to me. So all I needed to do was fill in all of the spindle holes with wood filler, sand it smooth, and then give it a couple coats of paint. When the paint was dry, I applied a coat of white wax to seal and protect the chalk paint. I think it makes a sweet breakfast tray, but you could also use it all the time as a riser to display various pieces of home decor. I really liked this small wood magazine rack. I just wanted to give it an update. So I started by sanding off the checkerboard design. Rather than trying to match the stain, I painted the front of the magazine rack with some off-white chalk paint. I took my time around the edges to keep the paint off the stained sides. Then when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with 220 grit sandpaper. Since I wanted to use the magazine rack in the kitchen, I decided to apply a rub-on transfer of vegetables. I cut out the images into a few smaller pieces so that I could spread them out and so they would be easier to apply. Rub-on transfers are very easy to work with. Just know that they work best on smooth surfaces. Once applied, I distressed the transfers with sandpaper to give it a more aged appearance, and then I sealed them by brushing on some clear wax. Before I show you how I used the magazine rack in my kitchen, let's make a coordinating wooden spoon. Some of the wood had chipped off this spoon, so I used my orbital sander to smooth over that spot. To coordinate with the magazine rack, I used some of the same vegetable transfers on the spoon. Unfortunately, they didn't want to stick very well. So after much effort, I finally got the first vegetable to stick. And then I applied a coat of Mod Podge over the spoon and let it dry. Thankfully, the other vegetables were much easier to apply. To further coordinate with the magazine rack, I painted the spoon handle with the same off-white paint as I had used on the magazine rack. Clearly, this spoon is for decorative purposes only. So, did you guess that I was going to use the magazine rack to display cutting boards? I think most people have at least a few extra buttons lying around the house. So, let me share an idea of what you can do with them. Cut simple flower shapes from an old book page. Then gather together some buttons and some green florist wire. Run the wire through a hole in first a large button and then a smaller button. Twist the wire and run it back through different holes in both buttons. Pull the wire taut and twist it a little bit underneath the large button. 
cut off the extra wire from the shorter end and then cut the longer end of wire to your desired length. Run the end of the long wire through one of your paper flowers and add a dot of hot glue to attach it to the underside of the large button. Add your flowers to a vase or create a base for your flowers by drilling small holes in a scrap piece of wood. Add a drop of super glue into each hole to hold the flowers firmly in place. For an extra touch, print out a phrase, attach it to a piece of cardboard, and then glue it to the scrap of wood. You can easily personalize the phrase to make it the perfect little gift for a friend or family member. Here's a cute idea if you have one of those votive candle holders in the shape of an animal. I have a ceramic bird and a glass cat. Fill the candle holes with styrofoam. The hole in the bird was quite small, actually meant for a taper candle, but I was still able to fit a small piece of styrofoam in it. For the cat, I filled the hole with half of a moss-covered styrofoam rock. Then I just began adding small greenery and flower stems to create interesting arrangements. For an extra touch, you could print out a vintage image on cardstock in a very small size and hot glue a small craft stick to the back and add it into the floral arrangement. Here's a fun summer project using a cute vinyl tote bag. My bag has a watermelon design. Spray paint an old tray in a color that coordinates with your tote bag. I cut the bag in half and then pressed it into the tray creating creases. Then I went over the crease lines with a pencil. This made it very easy to cut out. When my spray paint was dry, I gave the tray a good coat of spray adhesive and then pressed in the piece of tote bag. The vinyl coating will make it easy to wipe up any spills. I still had half of the watermelon tote bag left, so I decided to cut it up to create sleeves or cozies for some drinking glasses. I found four empty jars and just cut the bag into strips to fit around each jar. Then I cut off the bag's binding where the four sides of the bag had been sewn together. I hot glued the binding along the top and bottom edges of the sleeves. Due to the stitching on the binding, it looks like these have actually been sewn onto the sleeves. Wrap the sleeve around your jar and hot glue the ends together. Make sure it's not too tight because you want the sleeve to be able to slide off. If you'd like to see how I made the watermelon coasters and cutlery basket, I'll link that video in the description box. Have you ever received a promotional burlap or canvas tote bag with a logo on the side? Well, you can easily make it look like an expensive tote using some fabric or quilt scraps. First, to clean up the sides of the fabric, I folded the edges over and stitched them in place. This will make it look like the fabric is sewn to the bag. Then sew or hot glue lace trim along the top and bottom edges. Then hot glue the two sides and bottom edge of the fabric to the bag, but leave the top open to create an additional pocket. To add some decorative interest, I sewed on an oversized wood button that came off of the lid of a jar of wood buttons that I purchased at Walmart. And as a finishing touch, I glued some more of the lace trim along the top edges of the bag. I don't think anyone will ever guess that this is a promotional tote bag that you got for free. Do you have an old serving dish just collecting dust in your cabinet? Well, here's a way to put it to good use. You'll also need a large candlestick. I'm using this ceramic one that I thrifted for just over $3. First, spray paint your candle stand in a color to coordinate with your serving dish. Attach your candle stand to the underside of your serving dish using a strong adhesive like an epoxy, E6000, or a construction adhesive. 
I also attached a ceramic bird for decoration. There were a couple of holes on the bottom of the candle stand, so I put some rocks inside to weight it down. Then I just covered the holes with some duct tape to keep the rocks from falling out. Now you have an adorable bird bath. I set mine on an old stump next to the water spigot in my front yard. For this next project, I'm using a metal shelf left over from one of those cheap garage shelving units. I wanted it to look old, like it had been painted several times. So first I spray painted it black, and then I brush painted on some white chalk paint. To create an extra large paper transfer to put on the shelf, I opened up the image in the Print to Size app, reversed the image, and then I printed out one page at a time, carefully moving the image over to fill up the page after each image was printed. I cut off the margins and then arranged the images on the metal shelf. I applied Mod Podge to the side of the paper with the image and laid it face down on the metal shelf, smoothing out any wrinkles. I let it dry overnight, and then the next day I moistened the paper and began rubbing it off with my fingers. Once the top layer of paper was rubbed off, I used some sandpaper to distress the edges of the metal shelf. At this point, I felt there wasn't enough contrast between the background and the lettering, and so I decided to paint the shelf with some black chalk paint. When the black paint was dry, I distressed it with some sandpaper, and then I sprayed the entire sign with a clear top coat. I think using the old metal shelf makes it look even more like a genuinely vintage sign. Have an old shirt in a pretty pattern? Cut off one of the pockets and the button placket from the front of the shirt. Hot glue the two ends of the button placket onto the back side edges of the pocket to create something that looks a little like a purse. This could totally be used as a phone carrier, but I wanted to use it as hanging decor. So I added a little pillow stuffing inside the pocket to fill it out, and then I cut a small piece of cardboard to slide inside to add some stability to the fabric. Then I just added some faux florals and filled in the top of the pocket with some Spanish moss. If you have some extra wrapping paper lying around, you can use it to update old wall decor. I'm using these large wood wall plaques. I marked center lines on the frame so that I could line up the paper and keep the patterns symmetrical. I applied a light even coat of Mod Podge to the back of one piece of the wrapping paper and one half of the frame. Then I lined up the edge of the paper with the center lines and pressed it in place, smoothing out the wrinkles as best I could. Because the wrapping paper is heavy and large, I knew that I would have wrinkles, but honestly, this was part of my plan. If you don't want wrinkles, I would recommend using spray adhesive or glue stick instead of Mod Podge. Use a utility knife to trim off any extra paper and repeat this process until the entire frame is covered. Wait for the Mod Podge to completely dry and then lightly sand over the wrapping paper using 220 grit sandpaper. This removes the wrinkles and gives the paper an aged look. Have some large shells left over from a vacation? Well, let's turn them into expensive looking decor. Cut small pieces of decorative tissue paper just large enough to cover the inside of each shell. If you don't have tissue paper, the top pattern ply of napkins also works well. Apply a light even coat of Mod Podge to the inside of each shell. 
I cut a few slits in the paper to help it mold to the curves of the shell. I also used a Ziploc bag over my fingers to help me mold the tissue paper to the shell without tearing it. Then I applied a top coat of Mod Podge and let it dry. When it was dry, I came back with sandpaper and sanded off the extra tissue paper around the edges. Then using a small flat brush, I painted the outer edges of the shells with gold metallic paint. For this next project, you're going to need small shells, a lot of small shells. Drill a small hole in the center of each shell. I found that a multi-purpose drill bit worked best on the thin shells, but a ceramic drill bit worked best on the thicker shells. Be prepared to drill a lot of shells because I would say about every sixth or seventh one will break. Use a spacer such as a small bead or earring back between each of the shells. I created a tassel to add to one end of the shell rope, and then I drilled a hole in a small conch shell to wire to the opposite end. This is one of my favorite ideas for repurposing old wood curtain rings. Set aside two of your rings and cut several others in half. I used a miter saw. Take a half ring piece and loop it through one of the uncut rings. Then use super glue to attach the two ring halves back together. Apply super glue to the ends of one ring and then spray its matching half with accelerator. Make sure you carefully line up the two halves because once you press it together, it's glued for good. Continue to add as many rings as you like. You can wrap the rings with a variety of different materials. I chose raffia because it's easy to work with. I started at the seam, adding hot glue only at the beginning and end of each piece of raffia. To speed up the wrapping process, you might want to use two or three pieces of raffia at once, especially if your raffia is particularly thin like mine. If you have an old beverage dispenser that leaks or is just never used, here's an upcycling idea for you. Remove the spigot. Usually it will just unscrew. Make or buy vinyl decals of your favorite sports team logos. Insert miniature lights in the sports team colors through the spigot hole, leaving the plug or the battery pack on the outside of the jar. Because my jar was so large, I decided to fill it up with some inexpensive ornaments from Dollar Tree in coordinating sports colors. You could fill the jar with baseballs, golf balls, mini basketballs, or even pom-poms. The next project makes use of an old towel rack. Mine had been painted red, so first I sprayed it with some gray zinser primer. Then for a rustic look, I brushed on some white chalk paint mixed with salt wash. Salt wash creates a crusty aged appearance that I love. When the salt wash and paint mixture was dry, I lightly distressed the rack with sandpaper and then sealed it with clear wax. Next, I found four small glass jars and added small botanical rub-on transfers to each jar. Then I cut a short strip of heavy florist wire to fit around the top of each jar. I twisted a small loop in the wire, wrapped it around the bottleneck, and then twisted a second loop in the wire on the opposite side. 
Then I twisted the ends of the wire together tightly around the bottle neck. I used wire snips to cut away any extra wire. To create a propagation center, I ran twine through the wire loops and hung the bottles from the towel rack. Let's see what we can make with an old cutting board and a wood bowl. You'll need to cut your bowl in half. I used a table saw. I sanded one bowl half all the way down to its natural wood and left one bowl half stained. To make the bowl look like an organic part of the cutting board, round off the bottom corners of the cutting board to the shape of the bowl. I traced around the curves of the bowl with a pencil and then cut along the line with my jigsaw. And I went over the cut edge with my orbital sander to smooth everything down. I used wood glue to attach the edge of the bowl to the bottom of the cutting board. I let the glue dry for 10 or 15 minutes and then I added a few brad nails. But honestly, I think the wood glue alone would have been more than sufficient. Here's another project for repurposing an old cutting board. This time we're going to use it in combination with a knife block. Line up the cutting board on the slanted side of an old knife block. Nail or screw it into place. I used two nails along the top and two along the bottom. Cut a scrap piece of wood or molding to the width of the cutting board. Use wood glue and a couple brad nails to attach it along the bottom of the cutting board. I painted the cutting board with chalk paint to match the molding, and when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with sandpaper. I also applied a rub-on transfer to the center of the cutting board. This stand is at the perfect angle to hold a cookbook or iPad, and you can still use it to store your knives. I think old salt shakers, perfume, and cologne bottles make adorable vases. Use pliers to snap off the spray nozzle and some goof off to remove the label. A little twine or ribbon hides the threading around the top. And here's an idea for making use of the lid off of those cologne bottles. Grab a Dollar Tree plastic cloche and then use E6000 adhesive to attach the lid to the top of the cloche. I covered up the brand name with sequin ribbon. Then I found a candle stand in my stash that was the right size for the cloche and glued the sequin ribbon to it. Add whatever you like to your cloche. I added cookies as a gift for a friend. If you have a plain box style jewelry box, you can use it for hidden storage. First, remove all the hardware. To make the box look like a book, print out the image of a favorite book cover in a size to fit the top of the box. Then for the sides, I took pictures of the page edges of an old dictionary and printed out these images. Then I cut them to fit the sides and decoupage them to my box. I had to splice several images together to create a book spine image that was wide enough to cover the back of the box. When the Mod Podge was dry, I used a utility knife to trim off the extra paper from the edges. I also cut along the bottom edge of the lid on all three sides so the box would open again. Next, I decoupaged the book cover image to the top of the box. Finish with an additional top coat of Mod Podge to protect the paper. I'm using this box to store the TV remote controls. If instead you have a vintage jewelry box with glass doors, I have an idea for you too. Remove the storage components and if you want to paint it, remove the glass panes and the door hardware. 
I don't remove the door hinges because I prefer to paint over the hinges and make them disappear. I painted mine with two coats of a light green chalk paint, and when the paint was dry, I lightly distressed it with sandpaper and then sealed it with clear wax. Make a small floral arrangement to place inside. A piece of bark or driftwood makes a nice base. I know this is going to sound strange, but I also use dried toadstools plucked from my yard in spring. If you have an old cabinet door, you can make your own dictionary or book stand. Remove the top wood round from a large wood candle stand. Then, using a miter saw or hand saw and miter box, cut off the top of the candle stand at a 30 degree angle. Next, remove the hardware from your cabinet door and fill in the holes with wood filler. Cut a scrap piece of trim to fit across the bottom of the door to create a ledge to hold a book. Attach it with wood glue and a few brad nails. Mark the center on the back side of the door. I sanded that spot to create better glue adhesion. Add wood glue to the angle cut on the candle stand and place it in that center spot. I added one brad nail from the back side to hold it in place. Then I flipped it over and added additional brad nails on the top side. Once the wood glue was dry, I lightly sanded the door so that I could re-stain it. To replicate the dark color of the candle stand, I first brushed some black latex paint on the door and then immediately wiped it off. Next, I applied a coat of dark walnut stain and I let that soak into the door for about five minutes before wiping away the excess. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching this entire video. I hope you'll let me know if you enjoy longer videos like this. And as always, I'd love to know which of today's 50 upcycling projects was your favorite.